So thank you everyone for joining for this talk today. So today I'm very excited to present this talk here because uh, same as ICU4X, this was one of the ideas that was also conceived here in a Unicode conference. So it, it also has a, a, a success. So we will talk like a storytelling here for everyone. So basically, our introduction about me, uh, I'm Robert, I'm a Brazilian that uh, worked with localization and internationalization for since 2014. And Craig has, we know he, he works on for Google, um, dealing with uh, internationalization and localization. And one of the cause that he supports is indigenous language as if someone was in the last talk, so he was talking about it. So about the agenda, we will, I will contextualize the problem uh, and convert the problem, the historical problem in the engineering prob problem and the motivation. And I will talk about the language digitization for this project and talk about the JUPI project, the, the name that we use it, the challenge that we faced and the, all the actions. And also the as a form of acknowledgement, the people that have worked that have worked on on this project, and then we will open for QA. Uh, so the con contextualization was that uh, before uh, join a Unicode conference, I have read uh, this BBC news relating the critical situation of uh, indigenous language in Brazil, saying that the Brazil has over. 190 lang indigenous languages in danger of extinction. And uh, when I read that news, I mean, it was just a uh, kind of brief news. And uh, as I was working with localization and I had the chance to join Unicode Conference, I saw uh, a lot of uh, um, projects related to uh, minority languages around the world, but I never saw something related to Latin America language. And then I came to this conference with one goal in 2019 to see Craig and discuss about it. Because when I kind of dig into the problem, uh, I was going to read about the history, right? And prior to the, the arrival of the Portuguese to what we know as Brazil today, there were uh, approximately 1,200 1, languages that were spoken in the territory. And 500 years later, around 100 of them no longer exist. And according to the statistics of some researchers in Brazil, in professors, they said that in less than one century, this number could come down to zero. So when a language says to exist, uh, the, the history disappears, uh, the culture of the people and its identity. So as a person that is related to the localization and internationalization industry, I said, I, how can I help with that? I mean, uh, how can I positively impact those people? Because I have the knowledge, I mean, and I can kind of give my contribution. I will not change the world, but I think that I can, can contribute for those people. And then uh, after that, uh, digging to the problem, I mean, there, are, there were several languages in a very critical situation, but Language, language is in a situation kind of extinct in the classi classification of extinct language. Uh, the actions is not really to digitally include them, but there are other actions. So what I did, I started to study the language and pick the language that I, uh, uh, we have concluded, of course, with the professor, the, the language that could be interesting to, to be uh, digitally included. And... Um, I searched for related works and then I found Craig here and I could hear about the great in working involvement 
with the language around the world, mainly with Cherokee and all all the, this this work of Adlan. Um, so I converted this problem, I mean this critical historical problem, in an engineering pro problem. So from from a user experience perspective, uh, the Brazilian and Latin American indigenous languages did not exist today. I mean, they, they weren't in, in the mobile world. And there was no native native mobile content, content, so they were not part of Android. Um, also, no keyboards available for, for the people. And the motivation behind that is that the survival of indigenous language and cultures are um, uh, a crucial movement. And as new generations become literate, the integration of uh, the, the, the culture in, in the uh, written world becomes crucial. Because that was one of the speech that I, I heard, that they had children and their children didn't, didn't want to kind of learn the language because the language wasn't in the cell phone. So the, the children said, no, I, I, I want to learn Portuguese because this lang my, your language is not in, in, in the cell phone. So also as a motivation, the, these indigenous languages, they need to be present to be seen and heard. And even if for those who do not understand, I mean, I completely, I'm not able to speak the language, but I, I understand the, the cause that it can impact in, in, in their lives. So in the in the this digitization process, I split in five um, five phases in order to make it happen on and localize them on Android and CLDR. So the first one was the research and investigation where uh, we listed all the Brazilian languages uh, in the in, in the critical situation. We listed all of them, and then of course with the help of the professor. And then after this phase, uh, I've started in the elaborate and creating the Unicode CLDR data, and uh, in digging to the uh, engineering problem, uh, how to enable the locales on Android, and how to localize the Android experience, because we want to provide a fully user experience for the users. So the same way when you buy a cell phone and you have um, English or Portuguese, Spanish, set, we want to provide this for, for them. So y they will be able to see their language in the, l in the wizard, in the setup wizard, for example. And of course, we just want, we didn't want to provide just a reading, but also a writing experience. And then we needed to, to develop keyboards. Uh, in the research investigation, so we checked the, the endangered situation we check the, the, the digital inclusion status because this is important because this will, will decide the phases of the project. So you, we need to check, well, is the alphabet present on Unicode? Is there local data available? Is there any keyboard available? Because those, uh, the answers for those questions will guide the next steps because let's say that uh, an alphabet is not supported. The letters, uh, the, un the, un the set of characters are not supported by Unicode. So this needs to be included on Unicode before uh, I start thinking about uh, localization and all the, the other phrases. So those questions are very important because even you need to consider the fonts. So if, the, if it is not in Unicode, it's very, uh, Probable, probable that we, it will not have a font as well. Um, and one very important point is that we we didn't, I mean, we, it's not possible to take the feeling of everyone in the community, but this is a point that uh, it's crucial. Have the feeling of the community about the, the project. And uh, because they they sometimes can feel like um, like a, uh, the same f because of the historical they can think like a e exploration that you you go for them 
and you want to use them uh, in a for a business cause and this is very important to a um, very important point that you need to to provide them that it's not about business it's more about them about the culture and one of the criteria to to decide um, that helped to make a, a project successful it's having expertise people availability so people that are researchers studying the language the language professors people that are uh, native are in indigenous but also have experience with translation not uh, technology translation but translate in books and all this 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 stuff and existing books of course so in the second phase I will let uh, Craig talk about this this because this is about CRDR. I'm sure that uh, people have heard about it in other talks, but we think it is important to to mention about this this process, how we what we do to elaborate and create, and what what is the necessary data. Thank you, Robert. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to see you. This is the first time I've met Robert in person, and uh, we've collaborated using uh, all of our modern tools. But um, I want to make sure that you understand that this is almost all on Robert's initiative. Um, my part of it has been merely to uh, show, I think, that some of these things are possible, and he's he's done this work himself. Um, from an IATN perspective, as he suggests, it's really important to understand what data is needed to do something like localization and, um, and e enabling input methods for uh, Android device. And basically, um, the key things, of course, in CLDR, which is the Common Locale Data Repository, is that we have the basic character sets, the, the characters that are needed, and characters that might be needed for typing in other languages that would still be using the same keyboard without having to sh switch back and forth. Um, but there isn't a whole lot of CLDR data that's absolutely needed for a localization of this sort. Most of that uh, for the user interface is actually proprietary to the particular product that's used, in this case, the Mo Motorola keyboards. Um, would you like me to say more? Oh, um, and CLDR, I think most people are in, in this group are familiar with CLDR, and honestly, I can barely read this myself. Um, but CLDR is a great thing to have, not just because it actually has data that's useful, but because it gives recognition to the community when they see that, oh, someone's paying enough attention to put our language in a public, well-recognized area, that is very motivating to them to, um, see that their language is actually valued by someone other than just themselves. And as it's been suggested in many talks, the identity that people have very often comes from their language, but the motivation for their children to learn a language often comes from the fact that the cool tools are available to them. And if they can see that their own language can be part of the new things that are available to them, they're gonna be further motivated to carry the language on into the next generation and not have it just be something that their grandparents used to speak. Um, the CLDR process may be familiar to many of you, but it's most important to talk about what the basic core data is for a language. This can be um, understood in terms of core XML data for new locales. Um, I'm not an expert in CLDR, all aspects of it, but I do want to, but the basics are really understanding what is needed to uh, read and write with this language, and then additional features for full localization, such as handling dates and times, numeric formats, and other things um, are also part of that. The basic core CLDR data is not a huge commitment, however, but even for um, this small commitment, need the guidance of someone to work with them. And that can be an academic, it can be a tech guy, or a combination of those people. I'm gonna give it back to you. Yeah.
So those the the, the challenge started on the providing the CLDR data because they had the knowledge about all the translation process, but they didn't they weren't aware about the CLDR process. So what what's needed the local formats, the date, time, all currencies, time zone, territories, everything. So we we needed to have several uh, teaching class with them to explain them what is, how is the format, what does mean kind of these date time symbols and what you should, what you need to, to do in order to provide all this data. The problem was that uh, we had the idea to do that not in a conventional process because usually how how does a locale is present on is distributed around the the cell phones apple and not ios and android phones usually you submit the data for cldr then it's approved and after this all these these steps then the locale is enabled on Android or, or iOS. But in this case, we we did want we did want to to enable the locale before uh having to without need to wait for the CLDR uh, phase and release because we, we had a compromise and so we we needed to, to enable for, for ourselves the Android locales we needed to make configurations on Android uh, operation system, and the, he, there is there are the links for for the change that we anyone in the uh, open source Android open source that is interested can can check. And since we have changed CLDR, we needed to to propagate it on Android. So we needed to rebuild by ourselves the CLDR data and also the ICU. In order to make those changes present on the on the cell phones that we we are intended to to release, so this is the part of CLDR and ICU. So we are making sure that we have all the not only the minimal because in this case uh, we uh, we were able to provide all the content, so it's kind of like a modern coverage. So we were able to insert uh, over. Uh, 25,000 items on on CLDR, according to the, to the count, and all all of all of this work were made by them for the indigenous people, and with our guidance, of course. But in the other side, we wanted to provide a native experience for the users. So we we went to the step of localizing the experience, localize the applications localizing the, the operational system. And on that part, we we have localized the AOSP, the Android AOSP, and we have localized the Motorola experience. So all applications were, uh, were localized. So in total, we have uh, localized over 20K resource, which uh, means 100,000 strings. So. All this work were again done by indigenous people, so they were able to do that. And regarding the keyboard, we wanted to provide a read and write experience for them. Not only they would be able to read, but also to write you, uh, the letters. It was good, as uh, let's say, because since it is a Portuguese territory, we are based on Latin. So the alphabets of those languages are Latin based. So we didn't have uh, too much challenge to adopt this this keyboard because all the languages were already available in fonts and also in, on Unicode. And uh, but we needed to come up with the 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 better experience for them. So I have uh, partnered with um, Craig in order to decide what would be the best uh, keyboard for them. I mean, the, the layout, the layout. What what is the best way for the users to type the the letters? And uh, Craig has built some uh, keyboards layouts for them 
based on fragments of typed letters of the language. Then we we had interacted with the indigenous people, asking them about what what is the the, the best. And because of uh, the situation that the they were used already with the QWERTY layout, they preferred to keep going with that layout, but just in having the additional letters, of course. And uh, we have decided to go for for with a Latin uh, IME application, which is already embedded on Android, because since uh, Gboard had not uh, uh, implemented yet, we would need to provide this, this, this keyboard for them. So we did that. And then I, I can talk about the, the project itself, which is the, called Jupi. Jupi is, um, it comes from a 2P word, which means UP, which is a 2P word, a family. And it means plant with storms, which basically I wanted to, to refer to the protection of uh, of languages and uh, talking about the languages we have enabled uh, two languages one is called kaigang and it, it is uh, spoken in brazil it has around uh, 30000 people that speak the language it's present in the south of brazil and uh, in sao paulo state and last but not least, we have uh, enabled the Ianga 2. And this language is present on Amazon. So this language is spoken in Brazil, Colombia, and Venezuela. S and this is one of the, was one of the most active languages in, in Brazil. But today, it's only the 10th language, the indigenous language more spoke. So it's around 10,000 people that uh, speak the language. So. But we, we were able to uh, connect with professors to, to make this happen. So regarding the engineering steps that we needed to do, so we have en enabled the locals. So all the locals are BCP47. They are compliant with the rules. So we have the, link, the codes, link, local codes for them. Uh, we needed to uh, enable the Unicode CR CLDR and the, the ICU support, including everything. So f we have created from scratch the, the, the data repositories for this, these two locales, including uh, all the, the formatting data, script date, times, currency, measurement units, country la language info. And we have implemented two quest, uh, keyboards to cover all letters. And just uh, to mention about the letters, uh, the diff, because they have a distinction that um, all vowels needs to have a tilde, and usually the com conventional, uh, even the Portuguese or Latin keyboards doesn't uh, provide all the vowels, uh, all the letters with the vowels, and also the Y. So, and those are letters are very common and for them, so they, they really needed that. So the way that we did it, we have enabled the QWERTY because that was the, the preference. And then we, we have enabled the letters through the long press. So in terms of effort and collaboration, it was over 30 people. I mean, considering project, manage, project management, localization, managers, uh, testing, everything. And the cost was around uh, 30K dollars per language. And those costs are really related to, to the localization process because we didn't want to, to make them uh, that they, they should be handled as professionals. They were handled as professional translators. I mean, they, they and this created kind of new profession for them because this continued and uh, we wanted to make sure that they were satisfied with with this it's not only about uh, how can I say it's um, just do because I want my language press but they needed to to know that 
that w job is important and they should be paid for that. Uh, so this is how we make it real. So today, uh, if anyone buys the, the phone, it will have Kaigang and Ninyangatu enabled, and it's already available in the setup wizard. So here uh, is an example of the UI of the applications showing in their language. So mm, all experience are fully localized with the language. And uh, recently we, we have uh, received the news that Gboard was able to, to also enable the language. So it's today is available for any Android user, not only for the one that for Motorola users, but for any Motorola user. So here it's uh, an example that anyone can find it. So if you have an Android, you can check that the keyboards are available there. So here's just an example about the, the tiled. So the challenge in actions for that, that I could conclude was that we have two separated words. We have a word of professors, researchers, and translator, translators of indigenous language, that they work with that, but majority of them are disconnected with our word, which is the CRDR, the ICU, and kind of, both of them have a great knowledge, big knowledge, but they are disconnected. And we would need to find a way to, to bring those together and make more language available for for the people kind of be more active with professors with universities and departments that work with indigenous communities and of course my idea of with this project was evangelize CLDR so explain them what is CLDR why it is important to to have the data of your language on CLDR because it, this if your data is on CLDR, it's almost guaranteed that it will be available in, in the internet, in the cell phones. If you achieve, of course, uh, the, the minimal percentage of data. Uh, and one thing that I, I kind of thought about was uh, it, the same way that we have uh, the say Berkeley script and code initiative, maybe we could have an indigenous language initiative where we could uh, create a, a community to, to engage with people around the world and make more language available. Um, one problem that we have faced, and it was tough, was that the process and systems, all of them, they are based in English as the source language. So if you go on Survey 2, the base language is English. And this is challenge for, for this specific uh, cause that is indigenous. Because most of the people, they will talk uh, the majority language of the land. So for example, in Brazil, the majority language is Brazilian Portuguese. So the indigenous people, they will speak Portuguese. and. Uh, if we provide, the, for example, the survey tool for them to put the data, English will be the source. And they will not be able to understand anything. So this, this was one of the process that we needed to not use survey tool because we needed to provide the data in Portuguese for them. So the, the Portuguese was the, the source language in this project and the same may happen in Mexico if we go f for uh, support on um, indigenous language. So the, the source language should be Spanish. So maybe we can start to think about giving the capability of systems to have um, no English language as the source. And this is even happened today when we have Chinese as the source language. And even translation tools, they assume that English is, is the source. Uh, 
another idea is maybe have a server to available on mobile because uh, this was one of the challenges. So let's say we needed we need to provide the language. Uh, we need to create the localization for the language, right? And for that, I need to type the letters, but I don't have the keyboards available because my uh, the letters of my language are not really available. But the the easiest place to have uh, on screen uh, keyboards are on the mobile. So having server two available on kind of Android and iOS apps would be awesome. And of course, there are, there is a lack of investments that it's more related to nations because they have bad network connection, no computers, smartphones. So in this project, we have provided we have provided for them computers, laptops, and paying for the connection in order to to make them make it happen. And of course, we were unable to use proper characters. So we needed to create macros in order to enable them to to type the, the letters. And as a form of acknowledgement, I'm now going to show some pictures and some uh, mentions about the people that have worked on this project. This is the professor Vilmar De Angelis. He is a doctor on the University of Campinas State in Sao Paulo. And he has dedicated the uh, past uh, 40, over 40 years in indigenous communities with the purpose of studying and valuing the culture. So he is able to speak several indigenous Brazilian indigenous languages. So this is Iaguaré. He is a Yangatu speaker. He lives in Nova Olinda do Norte in Amazon state. He belongs to Maragua and Satere Maue people. So he coordinates the Yangatu language unification project and the implementation of uh, Yangatu Academy language academy in, in Manaus, which is the capital of um, Amazonas. And uh, he he is a photo when he received his Lenovo laptop with the goal of translating the language, and he felt so happy with this opportunity because he could carry the, the, the flag of Yangatu traditional language inclusion. So this is Lucy. She's from the Alto Rio Negro community. Can, would like to spread the Yangatu language to all. And this project with Motorola brings the opportunity to strengthen value her language, especially in e schools and communities. This is Kawan. And this is Selvino in Hoseline. So it's, it's of course, it's been, it was a challenge for them because they have never worked with, with a project, kind of uh, tech project, and they were very excited, but also nervous to, to work. But they were able to make it happen, um, because they felt it's extremely important for, for the future of, the language and the indigenous communities. And here we have Miguel. When I was called by Professor Vilma to work on my native language project, I got a bit scary. <laughs> but now I see it's a great opportunity that I have to help the evolution of the language of my people. And this is Sueli. And finally, I just finished it. Um, giving thank you for Craig for support this this idea and also for the Motorola that supported and make it happen because this born s with the Craig's mindset kind of it was a pet project I mean I start I started this project by myself and I studied by myself and when I I had I kind of concluded that it could be a potential project for the company then I presented to them. So I just wanted to I just wanted to be here to pass the same feeling for others 
that uh, they should uh, believe in their ideas and that the ideas are valuable, mainly when you will affect people's life. And language, because with this, with this, uh, s with this idea, now we will we'll not make, uh, we will not live that uh, what's happening now in Brazil. For example, uh, because of COVID, what's happening is that uh, the only history of some language were people. And they, they, because of COVID, they died. So the, the language died together, unfortunately. And this project has this idea, kind of to uh, spread the language around the world and the people. So yeah, that's it. Open for questions. Yes, uh, the, all the work that uh, we did for contributing with the data for Gboard to m and to build the the, la the the Android application and preload them on the Android device, we also made on uh, on CLDR. So following all the patterns, so basically uh, we because. We are having some change on, on CLDR keyboard on the initiatives, but basically we have registered all the 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 keyboard data of those languages following the, the patterns that we have today on CLDR. But yeah, they, they are present. Uh, everything changed because of the pandemic because uh, we have start I have started this idea in after the conference it, so I started in 2020 and because of the pandemic we we have kind of dropped it for the project for some time because they were they went to isolate in the village so they didn't want contact because of the critical situation in Brazil, may even today, but after s this time, we have uh, it was four four uh, four translators for each language, and one uh, linguist for each language. So it's kind of ten people in total, considering translators and linguists. Uh, the time, the timeline. It was from, um, I mean, the execution of, I mean, the, from the localization process took from August, August to February, I think, yeah, it's around the six months. Yeah, yeah, we 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 have used the criteria selection. And uh, of course, there are critical situ other languages with critical situation, and we didn't want just pick the language because of the number of speakers, and that's because I mean I, that would kind of confront the the real idea of the project, which is revitalization, and uh, the select the one of the most important criteria was. Do we have uh, 
capable people to work with this project kind of to make it happen because in order to have a successful project for the first time we we need to make it happen we 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 cannot fail and uh, the the most uh, uh, important criteria was yes we have available people they have worked as translators they have a huge experience in in the translation kind of writing books and from portuguese for their language and then we we pick them and um, we wanted to make an impact in the, in and the in, in brazil at all that's why we pick one language of each because we have two big trunks in brazil so we pick a language of each trunk so we pick a language from amazon which is in let's if we divide the the country into in the north and the south so we we also consider the amazon because th that where the we have more the most indigenous people Yeah, this is a, a great question because uh, after, I mean, in, in the day that we have released the, the cell phone, uh, there was other launches together with the cell phone. But the topic that has great the more audience was this, this idea because this was uh, a novelty. So we have never seen that in, in Brazil. And so... After this, over uh, over 70 uh, community leaders have contacted the professor, telling him that they were interested in to, to have the language also available in the in in the digital world. So, considering the fact that we have this 70, and we. According to the research that we did, we have around uh, 215 languages with distinct situation, with uh, kind of sick situation. I would say we, were, we have around 100 languages that could be considered. Uh, but of course, they, have, they don't have too many speakers. So if, if the, the idea is to, to have a business impact, uh we 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 may have few options i mean but the idea is to make them available so it's around 100 Yeah, I don't have the exact the uh, number, uh, Marcus. But indeed, there are some one that it's on uh, only uh, speak in the speak mode. But I, I don't have this this exact information. But there are a lot with uh, written word, and they are kind of create academies for for that and.
No, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and just one point is because, uh, of course, it it takes time to do a full ex uh, full support, and it involves localization. But if we consider by enabling the le the, the language in CLDR and ICU, we will make sure that they will have the minimal, at least the minimal. Kind of, I can, and we 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 may kind of try to change the some people's opinion in regards enabling a language because sometimes uh, some OEMs do not want to enable make available all the language only the ones that have full support. But if you imagine the meaning of enable your language, and even having only the time. Only the the weekdays localized for them. It's kind of see my language is is present, even it's not the apps, but the I can see the dates, I can see the currents, I can see the the months. That's that's what we we make value for for them, and this has not a big cost, and we prove that it's doable.